gone ahead now and decorate, cut and decorated the pages to our project. For this I've cut four pages, two each of two different sizes, to give a little bit of a contrast to the project as we're going through it. So the largest page is about two eighths of an inch smaller on each side and an eighth of an inch in. And then the next one I've made even smaller again. But I will put the measurements on the website so you can go back and have a look at those. But I'll just show you what I've done here with the file folder one. This is the main um, part of the project, if you remember, that we made. And I've gone ahead and decorated this. I've decorated both sides and I've also decorated all my pages. Now to decorate this project I've actually used a kit from um, Paper Maze. It's an online um, scrapbooking um, shop online here in the UK called Paper Maze. I will also put the link on my website and I've actually used one of their kits. These are the kits that you get. You get lots of little embellishments and words etc but also in their kits you get about six sheets of contrasting double-sided papers good quality they're not all the same paper collection but as you can see they all go together so that's why we like their kit so I've used this kit to make this project which has been great you also get in here six sheets of um, cardstock as well that all coordinates with your project so it's a great way if you're not sure about matching papers and cardstock it's a great way of using a kit and you know everything matches so I've actually used this kit here to make this project so then everything coordinated for me I didn't have to go and find you know, um, the cardstock to match or enough paper. I've had enough paper in here. I've still got some of the embellishments and the words left. And if I just bring in here, you can see how much stuff I've got left from the kit. There's still a little bit here left. But um, as you can say, see, I've used more or less the whole kit to make this project. So if you're thinking of making this project and you are here in the UK, Pop over to Paper Maze and you can always, always pick up one of their kits and then you've not got to worry about um, trying to match everything up. So that's what I've got left. Okay, so just a bit heads up on that. So this was the main part of the project where we had the V for the stand. So as I say, I've gone ahead and I've decorated the page, uh, like each side of the board. I haven't put a picture on this one yet because I don't know whether to add a picture to here or to put some journaling. But what I've done is I've just added lots of layers. This now and then is actually the border trim. You know when you get a piece of paper and you've got this border trim on here, that actually came off the border trim of one of the sheets of paper. So I use literally everything. And then on the flip side of this, I've used it again and some of the cardstock. This is one of the, um, the square-like um, ACT cutter parts. I actually cut the heart out. I'll just bring the sheet of paper and show you. I actually cut the heart out and used it on another page, but I've used the surround here and backed it with some pattern paper to give a different look. So. I try to use everything out of a kit, so even if you want to use one piece, I never throw anything away, I like to use all of it. So that's how I've decorated both sides of the boards there. But then when we got to the inside, obviously being a file folder, I had some writing on here. Look, you can just quite see on the edge here, I have it, obviously all the edges. But I wanted to hide that, so obviously I used the piece of the plain white here on one side because I thought I can always journal on that if I'm giving it away as a gift. And then there again, I've just used some of the pattern papers. I didn't have enough of the white, so I've done a strip of white at the bottom and the top and put the grey in the middle just to give a bit of contrast. Now bear in mind, when you have got this folded up, you're not really going to see that much of it. But if it stood on the side, it is quite nice that you have got something in there and it's just not all plain. So that's just my way of, of using that up. So that's the main project. 
I'll just walk you through some of the pages that I've decorated just to give you some ideas really if you're a bit unsure of how to decorate some pages I've made this project and it was a request by a lady called Leslie uh, one of my Facebook and YouTube followers and she requested that I've made this project now I've made this obviously as a photo album but you could also make it with some daily quotes or your favourite quotes that you could flip over each day and have an inspirational quote just to cheer you up if you're feeling a bit down. So it doesn't have to be photographs. But what I've done with these is because we had those nice tags that are great for journaling as well, I haven't actually stuck them down. I've just slotted them in. So I thought I could always take those out and write some journaling on them. And they sit there quite neatly and don't fall out. So that's one page there. Another page here, using what was from the kit, this slides out. Up there again, I've cut the heart part of the circle, not all of it, but to give a little bit of contrast again, just by tucking that in there, it just gives a different element. You haven't got to always look at everything being flat. And then there again, another card that can be used for journaling. So try and look at your embellishments and your papers in a different light. You know, slot things over. Don't be afraid to layer up. And the more things are layered up, the better it looks. Okay, so that's the second one. So if I lay these round, because I'll put them in order of how I'm going to do them. This was another one again. This was another piece of the border strip from one of the paper collections. And here again with this tag, I've actually cut out like an Instagram and I'll put some black pen round the stars to give that a different element. But I've tucked it behind the photograph so I can add my journaling, but I've tucked it behind because I quite like the way that it frames these are my two children, Lauren and Callum, so I quite like the way it frames that. So that's what I've done on that layout. Here was the one where I'd used the heart. There again I've done some faux stitching round with the black pen and another tag tucked behind there, ready to spot, put some journaling on. So it just gives a little bit of contrast and layering to your pages. Okay, the next one again, I've kept this one quite plain. I used the washi tape that came in the kit as well. And I've done faux stitching in a different style around the edge of this tag. And then beside here, another little slot tag that can be used for journaling. So I'm going to slot that in behind there. So you've got all the colours that coordinate. This is the beautiful thing about a kit. If you're a bit unsure about colours, you've not got to worry about making things match because it all matches, which is great. So, and it's nice and bright as well, which I thought was great with this kit. Another layout again, totally different. I put a belly band on this one, just to hold the tag in place. And then I've used a stamp there. That's the boat stamp from Stampin' Up. And then I've just added a couple of little card candies here from um, Craftwork Cards here in the UK. So a nice little tag again, which I thought I don't want to cut up and spoil that. It was perfect. It just says, this makes me smile, you are my sunshine. So that just tucks there behind the belly band. And there again, it doesn't fall out, it just stays in place. So that's great. And then the last page here again, another little Instagram page uh, that I've done and I've added some words here around the edge of this one so I can write my journaling on there and then tuck that behind the photograph to frame the two children so great little layout there if you notice with all my layouts it's lots of layering but all the colours coordinate so that's what brings it to life and then the last layer here this was one of the um, it was an and, um, Anthra Sandstad's sign that was on one of the cards and I actually cut it out rather than having a whole card there. And then there again, another tag with some faux stitching round to add some journaling and tuck behind there. So there again, that doesn't move, that stays in place. So there are all my pages, all ready to go. Now I'm using a bind it all here today to bind my um, project together. Now, I know some of you might not have a bind it all, but I'm also going to show you how you can also make this project, but bind it with just some normal book rings and using a crocodile or an ordinary hole punch. 
So we'll go ahead to start with, and I'll show you how you can do it with um, the bind it all. You might have to bear in mind the camera might start moving when I do this, because obviously uh, it's getting everything together. Now, as many of you know with the bind it all, you have to bring your back page forward to uh, get it all to line up. So I'm just trying to get all my holes to line up. Let's move that to a side. I'm using a red ring here for this one. So I'm just going to line all these holes up. This is the tricky bit. Put a page in first, I think, because I think we meant to bring a page forward, if I remember. Yes, yeah, so let me bring a page forward first. Some of you may know different to me. I don't use my bind at all very often at all. You can also use, I think there's, a, it's called a cinch. We are memory keepers. So anything like that will do. I mean, I don't use my bind at all enough, really, and I should do with all the mini books I make. But I try to bring different ways of showing you how to do things if you don't have these fancy gadgets so uh, but as I say I'll show you how to do it with this one and then we'll show you how to do it with the book rings so great little project you can you can add more pages to this I've only used this as four pages but even with four pages you've got eight layouts and then two more on the front and back cover so you have ten layouts really on this project so there's quite a lot of um, that you can add to this. You can also make them different sizes. I've made this one quite a substantial size, so it could take the six by four photographs, either portrait or landscape. There again, you don't have to. You can make it smaller if you've got all um, landscape photographs and you don't want to make it quite as tall, you can make it narrower. You can make it longer, you can make it shorter. The choice is entirely yours. This is the beauty of this type of project. So I'll just bring in my bind it all now and we'll just get that put together. I'll slide this round. Sorry, this is a bit like watching paint dry, but I just wanted to show you all how it works. I was fortunate enough to pick my bind it up, my bind it all up in a sale, at a good price. So do keep your eyes open for sales that come up or bargain bins that come up in scrapbooking sh um, stores, and also check out online because as they bring new ones out, the older ones tend to go out, tend to go in the sale. I'm just going to pinch that bit there and do a bit more. Right, so let's pop that to one side. I'm going to flip this one over. So that's how your project is going to look. You can't really see with the camera this way around, but that's how the project will stand. And then you just flip your pages over to what picture that you want to look at. So if I turn it on its side here, the pages just flip up. So they go over to the back and then it stands on its own and then obviously then you can flip them the other way. So it's a great way of seeing lots of pictures in a small project and great to give away as a gift too. So thank you to Leslie who suggested that I did this project for you as a tutorial. So that's the Flip Style album. I'm just going to show you how to do it with the rings if you don't happen to have um, a bind at all. So I'll do this on this one here that we haven't used yet. So I'm going to use my proper dial for this. So let's just measure out some centre points or some points in. We've got eight. So I think they're coming two and two. So they're coming two inches and two inches. Let's just make sure that will be enough on that one. Yeah, that should be enough on that one as well. So I've set my the bigger hole, the three three sixteenths up. So I've set the gauge up. That's made the 
two holes on there. And then if I line all these pages up, we can then do the same with these. You don't have to have your pages staggered if you don't want. There again, it's personal choice. Um, your choice entirely. You can take this to another level and add lots of tags and things as well. But I thought as a beginner project, I wouldn't give you too much to work on at one stage. So that's why I've kept this project fairly simple because I didn't want to frighten you with um, lots of different layerings and things like that. So, because I know I have a lot of newbie crafters and a lot of um, non-crafters that follow me. So that's why I thought this is a great project to do. I'm going to alternate my pages. So I'm going to have a big one and a small one, a big one, a small one. So get those all lined up, bring my book rings in. You can pick these up quite easily at any craft shop or online. You can often get them online, um, you know, in bulk or if you go to craft fairs. So they're quite easily available, these. I'm just using some small ones here for this project. I think these are these are just over an inch in diameter. And I think that will be ample once all these pages are filled with photographs and layers. So I'll pop that one on there as well. So same same idea. So you can use your book rings and then your pages flap over exactly the same so if you don't have a bind at all you can still make this project just with a couple of book rings okay so it just shows you that you can do this even if you don't have the fancy gadgets so as i say they just flop over then once they're all filled that's the project so that's making that's the flip style album made with the book rings and then the one here that I've just completed with the bind it all. So I'm Dawn from Dawn's Inspirations. I hope you've enjoyed the project and I'd like to thank Leslie for suggesting it as well. And I hope you have a go at making a flip style mini album. So you can use it as a mini album or have it on your side as a desk project. So I'm Dawn from Dawn's Inspirations. Thank you for watching. And you can always go over to my website, dawnsinspirations.com. I will leave all the um, measurements there for the project. And I'll put some photographs on there as well, the layouts, if you want to see those. And I'll give the link as well to the, the website in the UK where I've got the scrapbooking kit as well. So I'm Dawn from Dawn's Inspirations. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.